So I'm going to show you how to remove and install lower control arm bushings on a W123 Mercedes. Now, so these are the original design W123 uh, lower control arm bushings. They've got the press in center uh, shaft. So there's a couple different ways to get these out. Uh, the way I like to do it, you could drill this out and then try to you know, use an air hammer or something. Uh, I've done this on the car and I've done this off the car. I've done this uh, with the W123 uh, bushings and I've done it with the W126 bushings. I prefer the W126 bushings and I prefer the Limfurter uh, bushings. I, I feel like they're probably the best you can get right now. You know, probably not good as OEM. If you can find some OEM ones, that's probably your best bet. But I feel like the W126 are better. I feel like they're, to be honest, probably a little easier to install. I made a little tool to install these, the W123 ones. You know, work to uh, flare the end once you get it done. I don't think, I don't know. Do what you want. I put a link up here to the where I did these on the car with the W123 bushings. But this is easier. So, uh, what I like to do is go ahead and just cut the bushing in half on both sides. What that allows me to do is then I can just press the whole thing off. So two cuts with the Sawzall and reciprocating saw and we're in good shape. So I get on the other side of this metal end cap just somewhere along in here and I cut and I cut. Oh, I forget there's also a metal piece here. So we're going to go between the two. What you're left with, you can now peel. <laughs> oh goodness! I just love how these things always go. The bushing started to pull out. These may be actually loose in there. We wouldn't even have to press them out. So what I normally do is I cut that off, and then you can kind of peel this part here off, or doesn't matter, press will push through. And I cut the other side as well. And then I just support the outer edge of the um, spindle or the control arm and just take my press and just press both bushings through from one side. Now, this one, like I said, that, that bushing moved. See what I'm saying? You can just take, once you cut that outer ring off, you can kind of cut, and you can just kind of peel the rubber off. Uh, here, we could, yeah. So, we got lucky on this one. Like I said, normally I'd cut both sides off and just take it over to the press, support this inner side right here, and uh, take something and just press the bushing through. This one is loose enough that once we cut one side off, we can just hammer it through. So, uh, let me grab a second hammer to make sure I don't hit this surface. Yes, I will be hitting a hammer against a hammer. The one of the what are they? Uh, 
unforgivable sins or I don't know. Okay. So that shows how junk these bushings were that they were that loose in the control arm. Normally these things are really tight, the other side was. But like I said, once you cut, so if you cut this side off, just like this side, what you're left with is two pieces that are like that inside the control arm. Take something like, well that's too big. Um, take something like this and support the control arm and press through and you'll push both bushings out. Got lucky on this one because it was so junk. I'm going to take and clean this up with a uh, wire brush and we can take and clean the outside as well. Alright, that's good. And this wire brush is too big to go on the inside. I think I have another one. I need to go find it and I'll run it through the inside just to kind of clean it up. I can do it with one of these as well. This one's actually in a little better shape than the other one. The other one had some rust in it. I had to clear out. Oh, this one's got some in it too. So I'm going to take some time, get another wire wheel that'll fit inside of here and kind of clean that up and I figure I need to give y'all a little overview real quick before we proceed so you'll know what we're doing here uh, you've got two flats on the inner bushing part this is what gets pressed in to the control arm these are going to line up with the flats on the control arm so it's going to end up being about like that And I'm just going to take that and kind of do it like that and line it up and just press it in. So I'll hold it as I press it and I'm just going to estimate about halfway in. And we can actually probably stack these. at least to get started. And I'm going to spray the inside with a little silicone lubricant. This is the Walmart brand. To me, it's it's not that great a lubricant because it evaporates really quick. I've used other silicone spray that kind of stays wet. This stuff evaporates super quick. So to me it works good for installing bushings because it's not going to leave leave it oily, I guess, where it could slip in the bushing or anything like that, or in the control arm. But it's just going to help it go in so it's not so hard to get in, and then so we don't end up tearing or ripping the uh, bushing. So I'm just going to spray the control arm with it, spray the bushing, and you'll see it evaporates really quick. And it's not going to hurt, the silicone is not going to hurt the rubber. So like I said, I'm just going to spray this. And I've already cleaned this control arm up. Clean the inside up. Like spray this thing down. You'll see it will evaporate very quick. It's already evaporating. And we are going to line this up. Probably about like that. Probably gonna need another spacer here once we get this started. We've 
got that lined up about right. And like I said, it's it's gonna. <laughs> Just line it up. And I'm spread again. And we're lining up with the flats here. And keep in mind there's no hole. So I just felt it bottom out. That's our bushing hitting the other side. So what I'm gonna do is back this off. And I've actually got a um, piece of pipe that fits. So we're gonna do that. This is a two inch coupler. What I did is I ground the inside down as well. And the reason I did that is then this fits in there. That's what we're going to use to press the caps on. Like I said, I estimate kind of the center, so we're going to do a little trial and error here where we uh, press it and then take a look. So we're going to say, I'm going to take a little guess right there. What, we're, what you're going to find here is this is going to be a little bit further. This is going to be a little bit of a uh, move a little, check it, move a little, check it. And I'll show you why when we get there. A little bit too much. So I'm just gonna give it just a hair on this side, center it back up. I'm just eyeballing it. You know, once you put the cap on, it's gonna kinda center itself. Okay. That's eyeballing. It's centered. So these caps, the way that they're made, this end is going to press into the control arm, and then this inner piece here is going to press in to the uh, this tube in the center of the bushing. Now, what's going to happen is if you push on either one of these unevenly, you know, either the cap or this, you could end up breaking the bushing, you know, ripping the cap out or whatever. Ideally, you know, if there's a special tool to do this, and this is kind of where I started with making this, what I had planned on doing was doing that and then spacing the center of it to where it ended up being flush. And let me show you that. So here's what we've got. We've got, you know, just some spacers in here. But what we're doing is we are making this flush. Now, then we're going to put something flat across the top to press on. So here's what we're, here's our setup. <laughs> and I'll, I'll tell you what I've got here and then what I ended up doing on the other. So I've already done the other side and like I said my intention was to do something like this and then have something across the top that grabs both this and this so you're pressing this surface 
and this surface in at the same time. Ideally, that's what you're going to want. Um, what I ended up with was not that on the other side, and we may try this on this side, but on the other side, what I ended up doing was just pressing a little at a time. So, you know, press, uh, press it, you know, this surface, then back off, then press this surface, and just working on both ends. There's a little, there's enough give in the cap that you can do both of them a little at a time. And that's what I ended up doing. Um, is that the best route? No, it's not. Um, so we're probably going to try to improve on that. And what we're going to do is go ahead and start. I'm trying to see which side. They're both about the same. But we're going to go ahead and just start the cap on. And we're going to start it on in this part. So we're going to press there first before, ideally, if you're doing this, like I said, with that spacer set up, it really is going to need to be done on both sides. So you would need to set that up on both ends. Now you could get away with it without it by working it, but you know, anyway. So we're just going to start pressing it on. And I'll show you working it back and forth. And then the other side, once we get this side on, the other side, we may try to press both sides in at the same time. So we're just going to start this on. Okay, and then, like I said, we're doing a little at a time. So we're going to back off. And, and that's why I say, you know, I found it just better to do a little at a time. It just seemed to work better that way. So now we've got that, and we can actually take, we're going to put this back like this, to where we can press on the control arm, and then we're going to put this on here, and then we'll put something across like that. So that's pressing the control arm, the cap, onto the control arm. Alright, we're not going to go all the way yet, because we're going to flip over and do We could go just a little bit more, but that's kind of, we're almost there, and we're almost there. So we're going to go ahead and push, press the center part into the cap, and then, so. Is have a bunch of different size spacers. So close. There. So now I think we've got it where we can go ahead and just press it all the way on. So I feel like that's quite a bit of tension on it. You can say we're trial and error here. Not trial and error, but because we're not erroring. It's trial and press. I don't want to end up damaging the bushing. So I was just checking to see how far it needed to go until it's fully seated. And that felt tight. So that should be all the way up. The inside cap here is all the way up, but we're a little bit further out on the cap. So we're going to go ahead and press the cap the rest of the way on. 
So what that's going to look like is, again, we're only pressing against the control arm here. And then we're going to take this, fits on the outside. Center that up. And we're going to take something that will go across. And we're going to press it on. Felt it get tight. I <laughs> also started, saw it start to bend my little piece of metal here. Yeah. It's just scrap. And what we've got here is a fully pressed on bushing. It is, well, one side. Cap is fully pressed on. Uh, we did not harm it anyway. The inside is fully pressed. So now, at this point, we can flip it over and go ahead and press it on. Now, press the other cap on. This is where we might can speed things up just a little bit. If we wanted to press both on at the same time, we might could, but really, like I said, you would almost need something to support this side, both sides at a time. So, it's up to you. Um, I'm going to kind of do it the way that I just was doing it. I just feel like that's a better way. I feel like it's more careful. So we're going to go ahead and just start pressing just the cap on, on the center part. I feel like that's the best place to start. I'd rather squish the bushing, squish the cap, the rubber on the cap, than stretch it by doing this. That's going to stretch it. Okay. So we just started it. Mm. Probably go a little bit more. Okay. Now, we're going to pop it back off. Okay, what I did is I took a pry bar. This wasn't completely centered up, and so it was making it hard to press the cap on there because it wasn't wanting to go on straight. So I took a pry bar and just put it in here and pried it over just a little bit, and it, it centered it up. So what we're going to do is go ahead... I think I'm going to flip this over and we're going to go ahead and push the bushing on like this. I think that's going to be our best bet. push on the top. Like I said, this is not the best way to do this. But it is the way we're doing it. And what we need now, we've got those mostly on, and we need to press the center on. Let's see if it goes on straight this time. Centers are on. Looks good. The these look good. This one just a little bit. It needs to be pressed in just a little bit over here. Actually, I think it's good. So, 
that's what you end up with. We got centers pressed in and the outside edge pressed in. Like I said, the absolute best way to do it, probably easiest way to do it, would be to make yourself a little setup. But you're gonna need two of them, so you can do it on both sides. And but you really need to do one side at a time. This way worked for me. It's not the way the service manual is going to tell you to do it, but uh, it did work. I've done. It worked for this side. It worked for the other side. And you know, I'm out a two-inch spacer or a two-inch coupler. Like I said, you're, you're going to have to grind some on the inside. You, know, you can use a, I chucked it up in my lathe, but that was not necessary. You could take a die grinder and just, you know, work on, work on it a little bit. Anyway, that's it. I'm going to go put it on the car. Thanks for watching. Leave a comment down below. Hit the like button and subscribe for more.